Shalom, welcome to The Jewish View. My name is Rabbi Nachman Simon with the Chabad House of Damar, together with my co-host Mark Ronich of Statewide News Service and Jabez Tech Valley, and now the uh, regular uh, columnist for the Jewish press. Yes, I uh, am. Yeah. Thank you very much, Rabbi. And we have a very special guest with us today, Carmela Mantello. I've known her for 25 years, I think I've known you, when you were this high. That's and right, five <laughs> years old. <laughs> <You know? laughs> so uh, welcome to the Jewish View. Shalom. <laughs> oh, very good. And I um, wanted to, you know, you ran for city council in an at-large seat that you lost for uh, with just a few votes, less than fewer than 100 votes. In Troy. In Troy, That's right. Correct. And you're a prominent uh, fixture in Troy, I would say. <laughs> Born and raised. Born, Born and, and raised, raised there. Born and raised a native. And you're married, you have two children. I do. And you uh, you ran for mayor once yes. before against Lou Rose Amelia. Very popular man, yes. Yes. Now you may want to run again for mayor? We're looking at it, and we plan to make an announcement sometime in mid-May. Um, since I ran against Lou four years ago, I've stayed very, very active, whether it be boards and really talking about many of the issues that have occurred over yeah. the last four years. And unfortunately, many of the, the issues I raised four years ago are coming or have come to fruition whether it be public safety in our neighborhoods, uh, financial issues, the comptroller has warned the city about a potential double-digit tax increase mm -hmm. uh, next year. And you know, from what I um, yes. read about, on the other hand, that Detroit is up and coming, even I have um, you know, a lot of kids, but everybody knows that. But in any case, it's in New York. Oh, we heard about Troy. It's like, yeah. you know, it's the yuppie, you know, what are they called? The well, one side is is being rejuvenated, and the other side's burning down. Really? That's, That's Lansing the unfortunate. Bird, yeah. Yeah. So. Uh, the downtown is really on a, a true renaissance. And so if you're familiar with Troy, the downtown, it's uh, right off the Green Island Bridge and right. uh, directly across from Waterfleet. And the downtown really is seeing a resurgence. We're seeing entrepreneurs come in. Uh, the dinosaur kind of kicked that off and was kind of the centerpiece, which then snowballed into um, some new businesses, well, got, which is very positive. But you have galleries, and mm -hmm. you have uh, coffee shops, and some you have boutiques. Yeah, yeah boutiques. And it's very, it's yes. very much like Lock Street almost in Albany. Oh, uh, it's you know? better, better yeah, than Lock Street. Right. <laughs> and you know, Kathy like Sheen and I go back and forth about oh, okay. that. I just saw her a couple of days ago at the mayor's conference. But uh, the real issue are neighborhoods. And you're right. So the downtown really is a true positive momentum. And Troy has incredible opportunities. We have a seven-mile waterfront stretch uh, that hasn't been taken advantage of. But South Troy, and particularly Lansingburg, uh, neighborhoods are really seeing some serious issues along with North Central, which is uh, mm -hmm. the heart of some of our real public safety crime are you issues. seeing poverty and... I mean, what would be the sense more? Of that? Um, we're we're seeing shootings. Really um, crime. Yeah, crime mm -hmm. is on the rise in those neighborhoods. Arsonist um, is on the loose in, in Lansingburg. Lansingburg. Yeah. We've had yeah. North, close North to Troy. fourteen arsons since mm -hmm. last summer, and the mayor's response to that was, um, let's just say, uh, not. Mm -hmm. Uh, the best response, 14 arsons hits a neighborhood, and then in January, finally, after months of suspected arsons and fires, a task force and a hotline were established. Uh, we need to be more proactive. We need to tackle some of our vacant building issues, uh, which, is, which are prone to luring some of these uh, evil people who are committing arsons. And so I've come up with various plans to tackle public safety, tackle our vacant buildings, um, financial issues. And, you know, it's, it's one of those things. Um, I, I don't need a job. I'm born and raised in Troy. I have a job right now. Uh, but it's very painful uh, to come to my hometown knowing the opportunities and knowing these serious issues are confronting our city and uh, certainly we need a real leader and, and truly I feel I could be that leader um, but we're kind of flushing it out as we speak. And, well, I'm, I'm, I got so many questions here to go ask for you. It. I'm just yes, like go for chomping it. up <laughs> one <laughs> half hour. <laughs> oh, okay, <laughs> for, first of all, it should be known that you were head of the uh, Greenway Initiative. 
I, I was at the Hudson Executive. River Valley Greenway, in, which is right. in Albany to New York City, right. uh, getting municipalities from were, Albany to New York very, City. Too. You were very much mm -hmm. tied in with the Pataki administration. And survived also Spitzer and Patterson. So okay. I've worked with uh, various sides. governors, both sides, the Canal Corporation. Right, you were head of the Canal Corporation, and I told you this kind of this bad joke back then that when you open up the first day of the canals yes. <laughs> that you should serve locks to go with the, the yeah, bagels yeah, you should yeah. serve send bagels to go with the locks the locks are the, yeah, so. All right. I, it, it All could right. be a good idea you know. but I love your idea how many municipalities they are there are yeah. throughout our state and Mark has this oh, chart the, oh, the World of the tour? World Cities yeah, tour. Kind of it's I love it. I love <laughs> it. But I, I was afforded an incredible opportunity to work with municipalities all across the state. Because from, of the canals, um, just getting well, this overseeing the Greenway, and then I was What's the executive Greenway, director. Just to me. Sure, um, Albany to New York City. It was an initiative that actually started way back in the Hinchy days, and uh, Ma Father Ma Maurice Cuomo, Hinchy Mario was Cuomo was actually it? signed the law um, to essentially get municipalities, 270-some odd municipalities from Albany to New York City, to take advantage of the Hudson River. Sure. You know, turn your municipality, don't turn your back on the Hudson, let's use the Hudson mm -hmm. River for Main Street revitalization, waterfront revitalization. And so literally in the six years I was there, we were able to really establish some incredible initiatives from the canoe kayak water trail, which I did kayak from Albany to New York City. Really? You can't with do Governor oh, I'd like Pataki. to do that. Yeah, hey, you Mark, would love it. something for us to do over yeah. here. Yeah. We'll bring a camera along with us. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But, um, you all, but Poughkeepsie really yes. grew from that. The Rondout yes. in Kingston, Kingston yes. really Socrates, grew from that. Athens, uh, Catskill, even. Right. Hudson, and the city of Hudson, we worked very closely. But the then waterfront. down in New York City yeah. at the very end, yeah. you know, you the Hudson also. River Park. Park, it came out, yeah. it grew out of that. So yeah. uh, Yonkers had those revitalized. Huge. So, uh, yeah. We actually were part of the walkway in the Hudson. You know that incredible right. walkway uh, extending from Ulster County to Dutchess Newports. County attracts yeah. over two million really? Lloyds. That many? Yeah, two yeah. million people a year. And, New Pulse to Poughkeepsie. Uh, yep, yeah. and now Mark yeah. Malnero is really taking yeah. it to the next level. There's okay. an elevator; it connects to trails, and that's what people sometimes forget. They think of a trail as just okay, it's great, it's a quality of life boost, but it's more than that. It's an economic development boost mm -hmm. for that municipality. You know, trails do attract businesses. And what are the top three indicators of when you want to move to a city? Taxes, education, mm -hmm. number three, quality of Entertainment. life. Entertainment. Sure. Mm -hmm. Let me, so, so and now you're the regional, uh, well, the business development rep for right. an engineering firm, Barton and LeJudas. Right, right. So you're probably raking in some good bucks doing that, <laughs> based on what I know from other people who have a similar title and similar jobs where in other companies that are similar size to Barton and LeJudas. So why do you want to be mayor of Troy <laughs> if you're raking in such good bucks? It's a good question, <clears throat> and it kind of goes back to what we initially said. I, I clearly don't need a job, but... Um, you know, and you're just, not going to keep your job at Barton and LeJudas. <laughs> no, Le no, I would certainly, and, if I were to win, uh, be a full-time mayor, obviously, and take a cut and pay. But a to, huge me, cut. to me, it's it's really not about money. Um, well, good Barton for you. LeJudas, you know, whatever uh, <laughs> you have left over, you know. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, you know, born and raised in Troy, my dad was a detective, a police officer for 30 years. So I grew up in a very, you know, blue-collar but public service uh, family. And my husband's uh, an electrical, and he's not an engineer, he's an electrician in the union. So we're, oh, you know, I come from a very good bucks union too. family. I know. Boy, he well, knows. You um. talk about <laughs> calling an electrician. They don't walk through that threshold without uh, asking for a hundred bucks first, you know, so, oh but boy. But to me, it's, um, <laughs> you know, it's, like I said earlier, you know, if, if Lou Rose Amelia had done a great job and, and Troy was really on track, I really would not be throwing my right. hat in the ring. For me, it's passion, it's about leadership, it's about taking our city to the next level and addressing some of these very, very serious issues that the city's confronted okay. with. Okay, so this yeah. brings me to my sure. next question, aside from 
you know, are you crazy? I know. <laughs> doing this. A lot of people are asking me that. Look but, on my Facebook. But there's another. <laughs> but there's another, and I mean this all in good, yeah. good spirit. But I want you to also uh, ask you about, you know, the political aspect yeah. of it. I mean, because you're not going to get, apparently, you're not going to get endorsed by the Republican committee. Yeah. So your petitioning and everything else that you're going to do is going to really be on, it's going to be a shoe leather campaign in terms of just getting on the ballot. Yeah, you're right, Mark. Uh, four years ago, I received the nomination, and um, I also had the independence and conservative line, and yeah. we're three to one outnumbered, just so you know, Democrats to Republicans. There's three so. times as many Democrats. That's That's right. Which, which is pretty good when you think of the city of Albany. You know, three oh, to one's pretty good. It's like when 30 to it's one. 16 <laughs> to one, you know. And, <laughs> we have Lou on the, the, the mayor, the present mayor on our yes. show, and we Democrats. I didn't, sure. I was just going to ask you that about right. the. The lineup of the Democrats to Republicans. Yeah. So it's three to one Democrats. Three to one, to close one. to three to one. Lou's a very nice man, but um, we don't need another nice guy for the next four years. We really need someone. Well, are that's, you saying that you're not only not nice, but you're yeah. not a guy? <laughs> Last time I looked. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So. Um, but I did want to address, uh, I, I kind of, you should know, uh, over the last four years, and I've always been, and, and Mark knows, I mean, to survive a Spitzer and Patterson mm. administration at such a top-level position, you really have to put politics aside. And sometimes the Republican hierarchy, they don't like that. They don't like you uh, kind of uh, sometimes speaking up in what you believe in. And I'm a very independent-minded Republican and have kind of uh, ticked off mm -hmm. the, the inner party. And, you know, frankly, uh, this isn't going to be an election about parties. It's going to be about people, and we're going to take that message, should I run, directly to the people. So how do, so how do you pronounce Mark Wojcik? Is Correct. That, you know, Mark Correct. Wojcik is the Very GOP good. chairman yes. Yes. And of, of, the, the of the city of Troy, yeah. right. which is the guy who has to, you know, they, they have to be, be the beholden people. to yeah. whatever. You have to kiss the ring. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> so what, yeah. why'd you rub him the wrong way? I mean, what did you do? I mean... He, he actually uh, wanted the nomination for mayor four years ago, so maybe that could have something to do with it. But you should have him on the show. Well, um, no, because we wanted, don't have political yeah, party no, officials on. But He wanted the nomination four years ago, and I ended up... Um, Beating him. Be, I, yeah. I won the nomination right. over him, and I think he's a little bitter. But more importantly, oh, that's he works for the county exec. Uh -huh. You know, he's kind of in that, that clique that I, I am just never a part well, don't of. You get, don't you don't get along with of. Kathy Gimeno either? I, I get along with oh. everyone, let's just say personally. Right, yeah. um, but politically, you know, sometimes people kind of just want you to toe the line zip your mouth, and just go in the corner okay. until you're called. So now we talked uh -huh. about sure. Lansing bur mm -hmm. burning down and mm -hmm. having all these fires Some and stuff, real serious and issues. just yeah. being decimated. Yeah. But yet the guy who's going to get the Republican endorsement represents Lansing Burg, this guy yeah. Jim Gordon, yeah. and I just don't get it. I mean, he what's it, he doing in Lansing Burg and yeah. representing his constituents? Yeah. I mean, under his helm, there's been 14 arsons and other suspected fires. Under his helm, you know, there's been so many other issues, whether it be financial issues, double-digit tax increase. Um, he, unfortunately, has been part of the problem, and you're right. He has not fought, really, for the people of Troy as a whole. And, you know, that it's going to be a problem, and certainly he's going to have to answer to the voters. And for me, mm -hmm. um, it's very hard to sit back and not say anything and not do anything. Um, so, do, so, so are you going to possibly go for like an independence? Uh, no, uh, but oh, besides that, yeah. independence party line, or is that going to Jim also? Um, or is you that need going a party to, line, just the civics of the situation. You, you know, need I a mean, line if you, to run. You need to Correct. have some party. Even Correct. if they make up their own party. And, and that may be a possibility. You might have heard there's term limits right now in Troy. And the, the gentleman you were talking about, Jim, Jim Gordon. Gordon, and the mayor have established this charter commission. And the charter commission is actually talking about doing away with term limits. Over 70% of the voters <coughs> about eight, 10 years ago voted to implement term limits. Mm -hmm. They're working well. Chris Gibson actually imposed voluntary right. term limits. But so, there were two councilmen um, who are, have to step down because they're Because of term, term limits. limits. Yeah. But they can run in two years or run, run for another office. 
Um, you know, but there are term limits in Troy, mm -hmm. and we've actually talked about um, establishing a third independence party called Keeping Term Limits in Troy. So um, that's a potential, okay. and you have to circulate maybe 450 uh, signatures, and it's it's not that and that You hard, have to circulate so. petitions to get Correct. 450 valid signatures Correct. on the petition. Right. So, for example, someone might not know whether they signed another petition or not, so they'll say, all right, well, I'll sign yours because I'm not sure. Right. And then when they go through, it's who signed what petition first, right. and they scrutinize each one of these petitions, and they're election lawyers that get paid a lot of money for doing this. <laughs> so, uh, but aside yeah. from that, again, I'm into the money thing. <laughs> I wanted to ask you. It always comes all, back all to money. money you know? <laughs> so, yes. yeah, and it does come back to money. Are you going to self-finance your campaign? Or um, you I, to... I raised quite a bit of money four years ago. Um, so you have money left um, over so in your no, coffers? No money no? left over. I have the ability to raise money. and. You know, uh, I, I feel very confident that, that we can raise the money should I throw How my hat in the ring. How much do you think you'll need? Uh, this year, I'm thinking about 75 to 80 maybe, gram maybe would, would be a good campaign. Maybe 100. Okay. Um, but very doable. Four years ago, to put into perspective, I raised $180,000, which okay. is huge for mayoral election. I won't raise that much this time, but I can certainly raise You're in a raise better position now with Barn and LaJudas. You can really do this. Yeah. You know, BBL Construction will contribute. You got other family. I know that I got the list. So, well, yeah. true, full disclosure. I hire Mark. Full disclosure, I used to work for BBL, so I got oh, the list. Oh, you're BBL. This is B and L. Right. Okay. And, I was, and I worked for uh, Don Ledoux. Ah, very good. Uh, so okay. I got the yeah. list. <laughs> well, I may have to get okay. some names well, on the We'll list. talk, no. <laughs> but I, but you know, you have something in common with the Democrats, with the de Democratic candidate uh, Rodney Wiltshire, because he's not getting the Democratic Party endorsement either. Yes. So his major party. So he's taking the tactic where he made the announcement where he has a slate for the Working Families Party, and sort of considering that the major party line. And right. oh, by the way, I'll also primary on the Democratic line, and right. I'll seek that. Mm -hmm. Now, are you going to do something? where you need the conservative party line? What's happening with the independence party line? Normally, traditionally, the uh, nominee Republican will get the C and the I, the conservative and the independence. Really? However, um, it's not to say that we might do no TV, which is an opportunity to ballot and maybe primary on one of those lines, should he get that line. Mm -hmm. uh, that's still up in the air. Um, but saying that, if we have to, because you do need two lines, so I'm not naive to say we can just win it if we win the Republican right. primary and win it just with that one line. So we do need another line. That's why we're talking about that potential third party You line. see, the reason that you need another line is because there are some people in any municipality sure. who are so, have such a visceral reaction to one major party or the other sure. that they won't pull that lever. So if you're only on one line, you won't, even though they like you, they won't vote for right. you. So you get, a, you get a, a, a minor party line where they, that they could sort of tolerate, and they like you, they'll pull that, right. well, they won't pull a lever anymore, but they'll, right. they'll write you in, you know, they'll, they'll vote for you. Right. So, you know, that's why it's important, even if you make up your own party line, that's, and it's all the way at the down ballot, you know, mm -hmm. you could still get a significant right. number of votes. And, yeah. and I know. tend to get a lot of swing votes. Um, mm -hmm. uh, you know, before Lou came in, if you recall, four years ago, I had a 20 to 25 point lead over my original opponent. And then mm -hmm. very quickly before the vacancy to fill, they uh, were able to get my opponent to step down and then hence Lou stepped in. So are you minute. monitoring the Democratic mm -hmm. campaigns or are you just, you know, and what their rhetoric right. and what their party platform is, or you just simply got to be focused more on the Republican and then when you win, when's the primary? In September. September? Yeah. They no, move it up. I'm, okay. I'm looking at all. I mean, uh, certainly yeah. I have to look, you know, put mm. the Republican primary should I run. Uh, first and foremost, but I've been very vocal about Rodney Wiltshire, um, who, you know, missed two major budget votes, okay. the annual budget votes, but, major but, issue. But um, still, yeah. I mean, that's um, not, 
unheard of, and you know it's not the only ones, and he had other obligations. But so, but what about you know what? No, what no, he, he actually went on vacation. Well, he had other obligations. <laughs> Twice. Yeah, but the, the, family, the prime job. No, no, the prime first. job of being president of the city council and a council member, which I was. Mm -hmm. Your prime job is to vote on the budget. What and, uh, what else yeah. is it about Rodney yeah. that irks you? Um, not so much irk. No, we need leadership in our city, and Rodney if can't you do look, that? Uh, I, I certainly don't feel that he possesses the leadership that's needed for mm -hmm. the next four years. Um, you know, under Rodney actually has been there the past four years. Uh, Jim has been there a year and a half. Over the last four years, I'm not sure if you're aware, but the comptroller has warned us of the fiscal issues that are confronting our city. Tom well, what's Denapoli. the reason for that? Well, what was happening was there were water and sewer funds being transferred to the general fund to supplement the general fund's deficiencies. Also, they tapped into all of our reserves. So as Joe Bruno, think <laughs> about it, we had the majority leader pumping money into the city. Instead of controlling our expenses, which other municipalities did, they tapped into our water and sewer funds and our reserves. That's what made everything. So now yeah. we're looking at an operational deficit in, in you know millions of dollars. Well, I find that and there's I, been no yeah. cuts, and unfortunately, I, yeah. the council had the opportunity to reduce expenses, and they didn't. They hired two political appointees immediately following the comptroller's report. He can't do that. So we really need someone who has that management experience, who's not afraid to make waves, and really hasn't been part of that system. I haven't been on the city council the last four years, and I certainly haven't been mayor. We need some fresh blood, some fresh thinking, and we need someone that's not going to have to have some on-the-job training. Think about it, you know, Lou unfortunately did not have that background. He's a very nice man, but he, he was trying to do some on-the-job training. Jim Gordon doesn't have that experience, and certainly Rodney well, you know, doesn't have that experience. He owns his own business. A very, very small business. I mean, I oversaw a $70 million budget, 600 people, and I was in a time period where through-way revenues were being decreased. I mean, ridership went down. The Canal Corporation is a subsidiary of the Thruway. Mm -hmm. I was told point blank, you're to cut $3 million immediately. So we really had to sit down with our supervisors, challenge our employees, three different unions, PEF, CSEA, and laborers and others, and we had to unfortunately not hire 200 part-time you know, lock operators and employees. We had to think differently. That's why I didn't get we that job. <laughs> okay, now the lock I know. operator is a great <laughs> job, by the way. <laughs> so I want to. Yes. So when we, uh, so when you were talking, I find it ironic that when you were talking about how you were pumping money and into the sewer, it made it seem like the money was going down the drain. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, if you so. re if you recall, also. Um, the water where the frozen pipes happened in Lansingburg. That's right. another scenario. And they didn't right. want to fix them. Right. I mean, yeah. heard a little bit about that. Yeah, it's, it's just another example. You know, we're public servants. Mm -hmm. it, you know, you work for the city, you work for the state. Your number one job is to serve the public. And as you know, when you're in that position, sometimes you have attorneys, you have engineers maybe telling you, and this happened to me at Canal. You can't do that, Carmilla. We've been doing it this mm -hmm. way for 25 years. We need to get out of that mindset. We need to challenge our employees. The city of Troy actually has never been looked at in terms of the workforce. Are we running our city in the most efficient manner? Definitely not. I talked to the employees of City Hall. Supervisors are not being supervised and they don't have a leader on top who is challenging them. The comptroller has been there since the 1980s. It's an exempt position at the will of the mayor. We need a professional comptroller. You need to start thinking differently. We may need to share services like other municipalities. We're not looking in that, in that direction. We may need to merge a couple departments. We did it at Canal without any layoffs, mm -hmm. and we did it by just thinking differently. Mm -hmm. And I think that needs to be done in the city of Troy. And believe me, 
It's not going to be about politics. It, it truly is going to be about who can really take our city to the next four years, to a new level, you know, build on the momentum in the downtown and really, really address the neighborhood issues. Do you, are you taking pre-announcement polls where you're looking at what your name recognition is or are you just seeing when you walk into uh, a Chipotle uh, <laughs> with a hat on that whether people recognize you, you know, well, that's a la Hillary. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> you know? um, Carmilla. Uh, you know? Um, no, no polls yet, you know, but I envision probably over the summer if, if I do announce to do a poll or two yeah, just if. to see where you are. <laughs> if, um, but, if, wink, wink, yeah, okay. <laughs> you know, but, but I can tell you the support, I mean, has been incredibly overwhelmingly and just okay. so positive. All right, uh, let me ask yeah. you this. If you don't run, mm -hmm. okay. would you start some sort of group? that could grassroots effort, even with Barton and Legit, even with your current job, mm -hmm. where you can get something going to keep that eye on the winner and whoever is in the mayor's seat. Uh, can you do uh, something as opposed to just giving them a free yeah. hand? Can you be oh, that, if, if can I, you give that conscience? Right. Can you be that conscience? <laughs> because the, the city council has one Republican. Yeah. He's a minority leader of one. I was the lone Republican you were the for one. several years. Yeah, so it was uh, it was very challenging. Um, I, I certainly my my heart's in Troy. I mean, if right. if there was um, you know a chance that I didn't run, I'm I'm not leaving my city certainly. But no, but you've been out um, of the media for four no. years. No, I, I've actually stayed very vocal over the last four years, and and that's kind of the difference. Four years ago, prior to that. I was the New York State Canal Corporation yeah. director, and um, you know I certainly stayed involved in the city, but wasn't as vocal. The last right. four years, I've stayed very active. I'm on the Troy Musical Board, Leaks the Locks, the Epilepsy Foundation, and actually, um, I worked with the Epilepsy Foundation to get the very first handicapped swing, special needs swing, in I believe Rensselaer County. Um, it's their first, and, and, you said and that, that would be one of my priorities you, as mayor. To you make said that one of your, your youngest child, I think, is uh, special needs. Correct. What's, yes. Can you um, tell us about that? Well, uh, toward the end of my pregnancy, uh, my ultrasound showed that he had fluid building in his uh, brain, um, so they had to take him early, and uh, by taking him early, they had to put a shunt in his brain and. You don't know the, the effects of what happened in utero, but he does have mild cerebral palsy. He has epilepsy. Um, he is in a wheelchair. He's 13 years old, um, but he is one of the most happiest, uh, special little boys you ever want to meet. And uh, maybe someday you can uh, pop over to and meet him. But no, he you is work in a wheelchair. the camp now, though, isn't that? I mean, you have, there is a special <clears throat> facilities. Um, I mean, these people do need. I mean, they're having, like you say, I think that sometimes they're more happy than regular people. But, uh, but on the other hand, they do need special facilities. Right. And, and really, if you look at, at Troy and Rensselaer County, it's, uh, it, it brings you into this whole world that you've never been in, in terms of, you know, sidewalks and snow shoveling and bringing your child out in the snow. So one of my priorities, should I, you know, ever be fortunate enough, if I was to run for mayor to be mayor, would to be to make our city more handicap accessible and senior citizen. If you go down by Kennedy Towers and down by the downtown, a lot of senior citizens have the uh, motorized carts. Right. Um, and uh, it's very, very difficult for them to get around, not just in the winter, you know, but on but the very curbs nice days. Well, yeah, at least so. not, hopefully they don't cross Hoosick Street, because that's a... <laughs> Who's safe? That's, that's in my e district. So, yes, it's, it's horrible. Horrible, even with horrible. E even uh, yeah. with uh, being able-bodied, it's yeah. it's difficult. Oh yeah. <laughs> so, but I yeah. wanted to. Um, One more question. We're on sure. getting out of yeah, the Yeah, I know, I know. Um, right, it's I'll double come time back. for overtime. Yeah, I'll come back if, to... if I announce. I, I promise I'd be honored to okay. to come back to your show. That'll be good. Maybe we'll set up a debate. There you no. go. You know? I would love Never that. had that before. Okay. <laughs> in any new. case. Man. Okay. Well, thank you for being on the show. Camille, only great success with yes. whatever you do. You're, I see, very successful person. Pass and continue with your great success in the future. Thank you okay. so much. Shalom. Shalom.